guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today's video is going to be month three weight loss update. I'm gonna share with you guys my results, my before and after pictures, and then also I'm gonna tell you guys why I was so successful in the month of March. Before we get into this video, I do wanna say if you guys like this video, make sure you get a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Click the notification bell so you're always notified of every single upload. Leave me a butterfly emoji down in the comment section below. Share this video if you found it useful and think that you might be able to help someone out with it. And I also have a channel membership. You guys can find out more information about that down below in the description box or it is also right down below underneath this video, right next to the subscribe button, there is a button and it, is, it says join. So you can find more information about that, but basically you get early access to my videos and it's a great way to support the channel. Now, let's go ahead and get into month three weight loss results and why I was so successful this month. We're gonna jump right on in with the weight on the scale. On March 1st, I weighed in at 300 Point six, And I said then, I will never see 300 pounds on that scale ever again. And so on April 1st, I weighed in at 293.4, which is a loss of 7.2 pounds in March, which I am so incredibly proud of. There was a couple of weeks in the month of March where the weight stayed the same and I was like, what's going on here now that I'm looking back I'm like okay I had started a new workout routine I was dealing with a lot of stress and I also wasn't sleeping well and those can all 100% lead to you kind of the scale kind of stalling for a little bit so those things were happening and I will I'm gonna be updating you guys on my new workout routine and what I've been doing that video if it's not up right now It'll be linked down below in the description box. So if you guys wanna learn more about my changes in my workout routine, which has helped in me losing seven, another 7.2 pounds in the month of March, go down below in the description box and the video will be linked. It might not be up, so if you look at the description box when you're watching this and you're like, oh, it's not up yet, just wait and it'll be up soon and, and I'll, I'll update the description box. So I wanna also go into, I have lost in, the, in 13 weeks, I have lost a total of 26.6 pounds. And from my highest of 331 pounds, I have lost a total of 37.6 pounds, which I am so, so incredibly proud of. Like, I am this close to being able to say I've lost 40 pounds, but then I'm also this close to being able to say I lost 50 pounds. And when I tell y'all the content that I have prepared for my 50 pounds, like content that I have previously recorded. Oh, I have some really good videos coming up for you guys that I know you guys are gonna enjoy. And it's something I've personally never seen anyone do before. So I'm excited for it. And we only have 12 more pounds. So about a month and a half, two months, get ready to see that content because I'm excited. I'm so excited to be doing it. I also am gonna be reacting to my morbidly obese videos to kind of see, are we still dealing with some of these things? Some of the, what things have gotten easier and all of those kind of things. So that is my month three results. I wrote a list of why I was so successful in March with my weight loss journey. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just, some of these I'll just read out and some of them I will actually tell you more. So, but I do have notes here. So instead of spending hours a day doom scrolling on TikTok, which this was one of my things I did all the freaking time before this year started, um, I, it's just, it just not a good thing for me personally to pass the way the time. So instead of spending hours a day doom scrolling on TikTok, I have been keeping myself busy. I have a video called my toolbox video. I will link that down below in the description box as well. So if you guys wanna see what's in my toolbox, that video goes in depth on things that I do to keep myself busy if it's not the norm of stuff with the kids, stuff with my job and work. 
and whatnot. It, it's those down times. What do I do with the downtime? That is a really good video to go check out and it also has really good ideas on things that I do um, and just help with my food addiction overall. So I will link that video down below as well. Uh, and again, it gives you ideas and then also a full in-depth view of my toolbox. Every single morning, for the most, most part of March, I have in this note every single morning without fail, but if you guys remember, I talked to y'all about how I was reverting back to old habits for like a couple of days, a couple of mornings. This is when I'm most successful, this is what I do. As soon as I, as soon as the alarm goes off, I get up. Or as soon as I wake up, I get up. It, no, like, I don't care how I'm feeling. I'm just like, oh, I wanna stay in bed. It doesn't matter. I go ahead and I get up. And I go and I get ready for the day. Um, the temptation is there to just lay there all day, but I get up no matter how I'm feeling and I go about my day. Ever since doing this, I have had so many amazing days and I don't feel like my life is passing me by or feel like I'm wasting my life away. I'm now an active participant in my life, which I wasn't before. Now I will say, y'all heard me a couple, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, there were a couple of days. I just didn't have it in me, I didn't. And I was reverting to old habits and old patterns that I was, I knew was gonna lead me down the path of destruction, which is why I cut it real short. I was like, we're not doing this anymore. Cutting it completely. But there were a couple of days that I was just like, you know what? I just don't feel like it today. So I did get up and get my phone and scroll TikTok or just get on it and do something. Um, but I very rarely, that's another thing is staying off the phone. Like the phone is on the other side of the room. It's charging on the other side of the room. So I don't even have it in bed. That is leading to so much, so much success. Get up, make the bed, brush my teeth, get in the shower, do what I have to do, put on makeup, get the kids off to school, eat breakfast, do not touch my phone basically until I am at the point of eating breakfast. So I go almost a full hour sometimes without touching my phone. I stopped watching so much TV. As a matter of fact, I stopped subscribing to, I don't subscribe to anything anymore. And it's actually been like that. There was this one subscription that I had, it was called Philo. And basically you, it's like a cable kind of streaming thing. It's only like 20, 25 bucks a month. So it was very budget friendly. You get Hallmark, you get Lifetime, you get BT. Those were really the only channels I was watching. So as my budget didn't allow for me to really have that anymore, trust me, I, I miss my show that I used to watch every night on Wednesday. <sighs> so other than that, I used to watch so much YouTube though, and I would just sit and lay on my couch and just watch YouTube, watch YouTube, watch YouTube. And it always made me feel like crap. I'm gonna tell you, me just sitting and laying around, it doesn't feel good. It, watching YouTube, it just ma mostly made me feel like crap. When I feel like crap, it's harder for me to justify why it's important for me to continue to exercise and eat right. Because I was doing all this hard work, yet I was still feeling crappy. So it's like, oh, that all or nothing mentality. It's like, oh, I'm sitting here, I'm doing all this hard work. Um, and this was not this year. This year I haven't really ran into that mentality, but I also have cut down drastically. I can't tell you the last time I watched YouTube. Like I watched Christina Randall like here and there. I really haven't watched. I mean, I watch the fitness marshal all the time, but I'm not watching him. I'm actually like working out, you know what I mean? But like I would sit there and just watch YouTube and watch and watch and watch. And I'm like, I'm working out so hard and I'm exercising and I'm doing all this and I still feel like crap. So you just like, it was, it was my excuse. It was that green light to say, oh, go eat then. Go eat. You know, you don't feel good anyway. So the eating's not going to really make you feel that much worse. So just go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Not anymore. Um, but it is. It's so much easier to convince myself <laughs> you're already feeling like crap anyway, so just go. So I just try to avoid it altogether. And the amount of TV I watch is like, like I said, I'll sit down, maybe watch a movie here and there. It's very, very, very little. 
Um, I started being more active and didn't let myself get bored as much. So I would go on walks, go to the pool and read, especially we had a few days that were just gorgeous with the sun out and it was breezy and it was warm, but not too warm. It was just perfect. I went down there and had a picnic um, and also read like I just... I just have been getting out of the house more. So going to coffee shops, coloring, editing, reading. I didn't do any any editing. Um, but I did go to a coffee shop to color. And I also went another time to read. But just basically getting out of the house, keeping my mind busy. This is key. Keeping my mind busy. An idle mind is not good for me. Because it is the devil's playground. So... If I sit here and notice myself with all of these really negative thoughts, it's like, what are we doing? We need to go do something. We need to go find something to do, whether it's here, down at the pool, something somewhere, because no, we're not going to sit here and let, no, 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 we're not letting that happen. I started this back in January, but every month for the past three months, I have gone a full 24 hours, no social media, and then I also, for the past three months, have done a full 24 hours no phone at all so I could do social media like if it was on my computer or whatever but there was no phone why do I do this I started asking my question um, I started asking myself the question why do I do this because it's more than just taking a break from social media because I feel like we do need to take those breaks but so yeah a I, I didn't even read that a it's good to take a break from social media and from your phone and B it is helping me build my tolerance for binge urges and you may be asking me how and why. And I'll tell you how and why. When I don't give in to the urge to pick up my phone for that day, and there's a lot of urges. It is a lot of urges. Especially if you guys watch my bingo videos, which I will link those down below as well. The first month that I went without my phone for 24 hours, I think I thought about it because I kept a little notebook. I wrote down tons of notes. Anytime I thought about picking up the phone or like, oh, let me go pick up the phone or oh, let me go do this. I put it I put a mark for I think it was like 49 times 49 times I wanted to pick up my phone for something and it was just like I had to fight those urges and I did not get into it so it's helping me build self-discipline and it helps me work on my self-control we've been talking a lot about self-control lately on this channel um, and in my weekly weekly weigh-ins. Um, but they are both vital skills to have when working through an addiction. So you best believe this this month bingo card, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to do the full 24 hours no social media because, again, that's still difficult. And it's also teaching me to fill my time with things other than social media because, again, if you think about social media, I, I view YouTube as social media. So that means there is no watching YouTube. There is no, like, you can, I can, I feel like I'm like, okay, I could go and watch a movie on, like, a streaming site or something. Like, I don't know, what do I even have that has movies? I usually watch them on YouTube. Oh, I have Paramount, and I also have Peacock, because they had a deal on Peacock, and then Paramount I get with Walmart Plus. So I do have those. So like maybe I'll find a movie or something. That I don't consider social media. But like TikTok, any of that stuff, Instagram, YouTube, none of it. I cannot I cannot go on it at all. Um, and it does. It, it helps me also to find new things to do without relying on my phone so much. This is another really important one too. I stopped asking my kids to do things for me. And I'm talking the little things like, hey, can you go get that pen for me? Hey, can you go get my, my water bottles right over there? Hey, can you go get that piece of paper for me? You would not believe when you stop, like for me personally, when I stopped myself from saying those things and I would start doing them myself, I am astonished <laughs> in disbelief the amount of times I ask my kids to go do those things for me when I am perfectly capable of doing them myself. Again, that is a habit that I built up over the years of the depression and, you know, everything I went through with my ex and all that stuff. So, like, I'm, I don't want to blame myself or shame myself for that. But I will say it has been such an eye opening thing that I've been doing and I'll notice like I'll literally say hey control can you go get that for me and then I'm like oh never mind never mind never mind I'll catch myself 
sometimes I catch it in my head. Like, I'm like, oh, ask the kids to go get that. Or like, oh, I need to go get that. Like, oh, I should go ask the kids. And I'll be like, nope, you need to go get it. And sometimes it's like, I'll ask them. I'll be like, oh, never mind, never mind. I got it, I got it. Because I want to start doing these things myself. Because I am perfectly capable of doing them myself. And we need to get in as much neat movement as we can. But I think that this is also something really important because all that stuff adds up like how many times a day when my kids were here am I like go get this go get this go get this go get this it was a lot it was a lot so that's something that I did in March that I'm going to keep doing that is a new habit they didn't even think about that I was doing that I'm going to stop and then I'm actively working on stopping and it's something that I've, I don't want to revert back to obviously if I'm sick or something along those lines, then yeah, like, I, like I'm not going to be like, oh, don't do it. But like, if I'm perfectly capable of going and getting whatever it is I'm asking them, I'm going to do it. And that is a habit that I'm building and working on. And I'm very proud of myself for being self-aware of that and being like, Jill, you can go do all this stuff yourself. I am able to regulate my emotions in a way I've never been able to. Would I say I have been stressed out? I have been stressed out. Like, I feel like, like, you know, all of us, life lifes all the time. Life is lifing for all of us. You feel like it's going good and then poof, you get side slapped. And, and then it's like one thing after another after another and it just all piles up. And then like you feel like you can breathe for a little bit and then it just starts piling up again. But I, I honestly feel... I used to feel so depressed all the time. I used to cry literally almost every single day. I used to feel anxious all the time. And I'm not saying that I don't ever feel any of those emotions, but here's the difference. I'm regulating them a lot better than I ever used to before. And B, I am pushing past 98% of the time I am doing the opposite of whatever it is that I'm feeling. Like if I'm feeling like, I do, I'll, I'll use this for an example. I had on my bingo card for March to go clean my, it needed it done. It needed to be done so bad. Clean and organize my freezer and fridge. I did not want to do it. Everything in me did not want to do it. And I was like, well, you don't have to do it, but you won't complete this. And so like, what do you want to do? It's like, okay, like I want to do it, but I don't want to, I don't want to clean it. And that's the whole point of my bingo cards. Honestly, it is. It's the whole point of my bingo cards is to get me out of my comfort zone. So I went and I did it, even though with everything in me, I didn't feel like it. I did the opposite of what I wanted to do, which was just read a book or, or do something like that. You know, something chill, something where I don't have to like be active and moving and stuff. So a lot of times I don't want to get up out of bed too bad. Get your ass up out of bed. And here's the thing. It's not about being positive all the time. It's not about, you know, like forcing myself to do things or not allowing my body to rest. This is like, if I would allow myself to just lay in bed every day, all day, like that is a recipe for disaster. So there's still a balance of a rest day where you can do anything if you want to get up and move and do stuff you can but then if you want to lay in bed and like go get your phone as soon as you wake up you can do that too like all you have to do is do this one yoga workout and then my other stuff for 75 soft but other than that which is like really nothing it's like reading journaling affirmations drinking water that's literally it so if you want to all day long just lay in bed and do nothing or lay on the couch and do nothing and like scroll by all means do it so I have one day a week honestly I used to have these days multiple times a week before this year but I have noted that I will take several hours especially like most of the morning into part of the afternoon and I'll find myself being, I'll find myself bored. Like I need to get up and move. I need to go do something. And it's like, just imagine how that's going to change as I keep losing weight. And as I keep with this mentality and this attitude that I have, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. Um, another thing that's been huge is positive affirmations every day. I have two apps I use relentlessly. The one for the one of them is called I am. And another one is called spark. I think it's called Spark Weight Loss. 
Um, but it's like, I am worthy of achieving my weight loss goals and living a vibrant and fulfilling life. Every day is a new opportunity to make healthy choices. It's like affirmations that are building me to have a better mentality, a better outlook on life. So I highly, highly, highly recommend daily affirmations because they have been another really vital, crucial part in my success so far and I know it's going to be a part of my success ongoing because that is something that I do daily. I even have positive affirmations written on a piece of paper that I have taped on my bathroom mirror that I repeat multiple times a day and it just keeps me in that positive mindset. And also not just a positive mindset, but also a grateful mindset. So I have been keeping my commitments to myself, therefore increasing my self-confidence and my trust in myself and my trust in myself. Think about it. When you're working, when you're waking up and you tell yourself, I can't today, and you give in to that, you're telling yourself that you can't do something. And when you do that enough times, then you subconsciously believe you can't do much and you're starting to lose your purpose in life and you start to feel, why bother? And that's a rippling effect, especially for me when it comes to binging and emotionally eating. 100% that was so me telling myself every single day, I can't adult today, I can't get out of bed, I can't, and using my past and my experiences and maybe what's going on in my life right now, like why bother, it doesn't matter, no, 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 no more of that, no more. Like I said, I do give into it sometimes, but for the most part, 98% of the time, this is the mentality that I have to keep. So I used to give in enough days and feel guilt and shame for not keeping the promises that I was keeping to myself, that was not keeping the promises that I made to myself. So I was ending up, I was ending up binging and emotionally eating because I started to not care. Um, you wouldn't think that keeping your commitments would do this, but it 100% does. And I learned this by observing my actions and why things are so different for me this time. Instead of dreading the commitments I make to others, I now look forward to them. And instead of wanting to isolate and not be around people, I'm putting myself in situations to be around others. This has been life changing, not just for my eating and my emotional eating and my eating disorder and stuff like that, but just in life in general, not isolating as much anymore. Um, I focused on getting out of the house this month, outdoor walks to different parks, taking my coloring books. I kind of think I went over this already. Coloring books to coffee shops, bookstores, reading at parks. I didn't go to bookstores. I, I wanted to, but I never made it there. Reading at parks, bookstores, uh, by the pool. Um, again, check out this month's, uh, check out March's bingo card. Um, and this is something I feel like I talk about a lot, but whenever I run errands, I always park at the very 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 back of the parking lot and if i'm in a shopping center where i have to go here and here i will park my car and i will walk here and then i'll walk here and then i'll walk back to my car no more go here park go here get back in the car drive over here for what no i'm walking i'm walking even if it's raining we got rain jackets like even if it's hot we don't care even if it's freezing cold we got jackets we don't care um, that is, that is something that's been really crucial to my success. But another thing is, and I mentioned this last year, last month, I'm going to mention it again, focusing on protein, getting enough protein. I get in about 140 grams and protein and fiber, magic combo, magic, magic, magic combo. And it really, truly helps to satiate me throughout the day. I was last year when I was on my weight loss journey, 100%, I was getting in like 22, 24 hundred calories at this weight. I'm now completely satisfied, sometimes 1800 calories. Where last year, the way that I was eating and not focusing on protein and fiber, I was, I mean, I was, I was like, I still want more. I still want more. Again, I've also done a lot of internal work on myself, so I'm not wanting to emotionally eat. I also got a lot of my foods that are very tempting out of the house. I tell myself I can have it at any time, any point, but I just have to go out. I can't bring it in the house. And that's been working for me. 
Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you are new here. Do not forget about my channel membership that is linked down below. If you guys made it to the end of this video, make sure you leave me two butterfly emojis down below in the comment section. I love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. I'm not sure when the next one's going to be, but I will see you guys the next one. Bye, y'all.